blue waves striking against the green wall of tropical forests. That was the picture of Kerala's coastline a couple of centuries ago. And the forests were the mangroves, a forest that grows into the sea, as Rachel Carson describes it. Estuaries are literally river mouths opening out to the sea. Estuarine deltas are the permanent grounds for continuous tidal activities, for the high tide and the low tide. The mangrove forests that developed in the coastal areas of the tropics stood permanent guard at the estuarine gates of rivers. Intertidal zones are areas where the life cycles of countless organisms take place constantly with the daily high tide and the low tide. The saline seawater and the fresh river water full of living organisms mix together and circulate in these zones. This is made possible by the presence of the mangrove forests. With each high tide and low tide, the deposition of sediments and detritus increase in the mangroves. The mangroves provide fertile grounds for all life systems. The ecological diversity of the mangroves is caused by elements such as wind, rain, humidity and powerful currents of the river flow. The daily tidal activities increase its richness. The decomposing plant material release the minerals and the other organic substances. Organic activities in continuation of this process multiply through the action of the microorganisms. Mangrove areas are the richest spawning grounds of aquatic life because of the ideal shade and shelter available. Not only sea fish, but even freshwater fish from higher altitudes cannot but come down here following the dictates of their instincts, fulfilling their primal needs. Human habitation in such areas necessarily resulted in evolving certain primary fishing techniques. Shrimp trapping or chemin keta is one of the traditional forms of fishing. This practice was developed making use of the tidal flow at particular times. In the mangrove ecosystem, there is the continuity of a complex web 
of food chains. At the base of the food chain is the microscopic organisms. Then, feeding on them, fish and other fauna. Reptiles, birds and mammals preying on the fish and the like. The chain goes on. The dense, sturdy vegetation of the mangrove forest protects this complex habitat. Any sort of intervention will wipe it out. The organic balance will be upset and they will eventually die. The impenetrable walls of the mangrove plants form a fortress, breaking the wild winds and checking the destructive violence of the monsoons. Even for the famous armadas of history, mangroves formed an initial barrier. Avicennia's flowering is a feast time for the honey bee. Avicennia, Acanthus, Rhizophora, Bruguera, Exocaria, Aegisaras, Sonoracea and so on are the common species found in the mangrove. Though mangroves are not as rich in biodiversity as the tropical rainforest, their biomass production is very high. The structural adaptation of the mangrove plants is unique. They have developed in response to the complex echo conditions. Expelling excess salt absorbed during highly saline conditions is peculiar to mangrove plants. This process also helps in the desalination of groundwater. Several species of mangrove trees form branches of roots projecting above the earth's surface of muddy soil and water called pneumatophores for absorbing atmospheric oxygen since the swamp doesn't permit sufficient air circulation. In the rhizophora tree, the main stem produces stilt roots that grow down. They enable the plants to buffet the rough climatic conditions of the coastal regions. Other types of mangrove trees grow only within the protective ring of these sturdy bodyguards. In the mangroves, viviparous germination is common. For example, Seeds of the rhizophora start germination while the fruit is still attached to the mother plant. As soon as they fall in the swamp, they start growing quickly. An entirely new plant takes birth, thus. The seeds of the other species reach the cove provided by the rhizophora stilt roots. 
Gradually, a mangrove system takes shape in that region. The human community living around a mangrove area cannot but depend on it to a great extent. In the coastal hamlets, where there are still mangroves, fuel for the household purposes, pasture for grazing domestic animals, and even raw materials for cottage industries are obtained from them. But the needs of the ever-expanding modern society is not comparable with the humble needs of a village. In the mad rush to realize the dreams of urbanization and development within the shortest time, it becomes impossible to retain the pristine quality of nature. The impact of modernization hits mangroves the hardest as they are trampled upon by the beach culture. Most of us do not realize that the mangrove ecosystem is a vital center of organic exchange. It is not only in the name of unavoidable need that we fell and reclaim mangroves. In most of the cases, they are destroyed as useless shrubs. The roads built across estuarine deltas will block the flow of water between the tides and break the reproduction cycles of aquatic life. The natural slope necessary for the regeneration of the mangroves are undone where embankments are constructed. One of the most destructive phases of the explosive industrialization of the 90s is shrimp culture. This global enterprise which brings in profits to the tune of crows into the pockets of big-time entrepreneurs kills off the entire coastal ecosystems of the tropical countries. Shrimp culture consists in monoculture of shrimp in specially prepared tanks containing water with a specific salinity. Into this water, seedlings of shrimp developed in special hatcheries are introduced. Then, only these seedlings are allowed to grow. All other organisms are wiped out. After a few years of exploitation, when the yield dwindles, the entrepreneurs go off in search of new pastures, leaving behind them the graveyard of mangrove ecosystems. Once upon a time, Kerala's coastline, across which 41 rivers flow from the eternal fertility of the Western Ghats and fall into the Lakshadweep Sea, was covered with mangrove forests. Now, they have shrunk and are very few and far between. Whatever remains is also under threat of being wiped out entirely.
shouldn't we do something to protect at least the mangrove sapling that raised their heads from amongst the scenes of total depletion? The mangrove forest recently planted and nurtured by certain voluntary organizations and the local people at Chellanam and Chetua is a positive sign. There is one person at Pariyangadi Kannur who was agonized to see the dresses and the umbrellas of school children blown away by the dry wind blowing from beyond Madaipara. Kallan Pokidan, who plants rhizophora on the river banks like a one man voluntary organization. <laughs> We may not be able to revive the greenery that had spread all along the coastal plains once upon a time. But still, there are some green islands and some forms of life do go on around them. Nature's healing compassion will always shower down and a rebirth is still possible if only we let them be. <laughs> 